Yes, hello, welcome to the last in the current series of On the Bench, the only local TV sports show for North Lincolnshire and East Yorkshire right here on Estuary TV. Well, on the show this week, we'll be taking a look at the results from the weekend, and as usual, we'll have the hockey game highlights from the whole Stingrays. Don't miss that. Also with me this week, we have Matthew Fawcett and Matt McCart from the whole Wasps. We've also got another Matt, just to confuse things even further, joining us after the first half. Matt Denson. He'll be here to give us his view on the weekend sport. Oh, welcome, Matthew and Matt. Thank you. Uh, oh, let's talk about the weekend me. first. Who are you playing? We played against Team Birmingham. It was a bit of a scrappy game. Unfortunately, we, we lost by 10. Yeah. So let's talk about the game. Uh, no prizes for guessing. You're from America. Matt? Yes. Uh, yes, I Tell am. us a story Very about proud. how you came to be over here. Well, Matt and I worked together. We met at a basketball camp for an NBA franchise in uh, Pennsylvania, my native state. And we've kept in touch good friends and when I got done playing at university at Penn State he said come on over and and be part of the Wasp family and I couldn't you know be more more honored and ready to come. Doing so, something you love. Yeah absolutely I've, I've kept the ball in my hand ever since been in shape never you know never let the opportunity go by so when I came over I was ready to hit the ground running and contribute to the team and and make moves and grow and progress and all. Wonderful. Matthew where are the team at at the moment? Uh, currently, we've started a little shaky. We've we've played nine. We've only won two of them. But it is certainly a transition year for us. We got promotion last season, and, and that meant stepping up a whole different league and different class of teams. So even though we've only won two, we've been there or thereabouts in every game. So a couple of tweaks over the Christmas period, we could certainly make some noise in the second and half of the year. And what's Matt been able to bring to the team? Just versatility, because it's certainly a tall person's game, you know, on paper. So the fact that he's six foot five and and he comes from a, a basketball pedigree where he's brought a lot of talent to us and a, and a work ethic. And what about the interest in basketball locally over here? How does it compare with America, finally, briefly, Matt? Well, it's different from the start that geographically, I mean, America's so much bigger, so you just have so many more people interested in it. But percentages, there's, there's still people in England and in Hull that, that care about it, that want to see it grow. I'm involved in volunteer coaching, and we have decent numbers whenever we run a session at a middle school or anything like that, you know, 20, 15, 30, 30 kids showing up, want to it's know what well. the game's all about. Yeah, okay, they want we'll to fall in love with it. Guys, thanks very much, the two mats. Well, moving on, we sent Rachel and the camera crew to Hull Wasps to see how they got on. Let's see them in action. So we're down here at Hull Wasps. We've come to see who they are, what they're about, and have a bit of an insight into one of their training sessions. with Jimmy and Mark from Hull Wasps. So Jimmy, just tell me about the heritage of Hull Wasps. have been going for over 50 years, but the team? Uh, currently the team as it's done now, Hull Wasps have been going for six years. Uh, obviously we've come up from being juniors from our feeder programmes. Uh, we've got to be going for uh, since 1961. Uh, yeah. oh. like, as, as a national men's team at the moment, six years we've been running. Uh, we started off Division 3, Division 4, and back to Division 3. Brilliant. And because you play at a really, really high standard, Jimmy, you play obviously nationally. Yeah. Where are you in terms of the division and where would you like to be? Where would you like uh, to get to? <laughs> currently we're, uh, we're sort of bottom end of the table at the moment, not bottom at all, but uh, we're looking maybe to rise up that table a little bit. Come New Year, uh, obviously, just to get a few tweaks here and there that I'm, I'm planning on doing and we're hopefully we're going to uh, try and ride that table. I mean, we've, we've beaten some top teams. We can compete at this level. It's just a case of being able to do a game in, game out. Yeah. On all the time, yeah. And uh, also, Mark, you've got a couple of overseas players. So yes. just talk to me about how they get involved in the club and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, we've got, um, we've got one, uh, uh, Flo, who's uh, a French student who plays for the, comes from the university, uh, contacted us. I think he played for us before like, last season. Um, before, yeah. Season before. Um, and he, uh, he had come back over to study. So. Uh, we've also got uh, Matt McCart, who's from Philadelphia. He's um, he played for last season. Uh, he's friends with, uh, with the coach of last season. So, yeah. So just connections, really, yeah, more than this, the, thing, the thing is with basketball, basketball is an international language. If you can play, you can play anywhere. Yeah, I find you that. I'm always. You don't, <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to be. You don't have to be the language now to play the game because. Yeah. You, you do what the talking or what you do on the court shows how good you are. Brilliant. Well, thank you ever so much for talking to us, and uh, we'll see you in the studio for, in a couple of days. Okay. Cheers. Thank you.
So I'm here with Matt and Joe Dash from the Hull Wasps. Thank you very much for joining me. So just talk to me about how you got into the team. Matt, you've been with the team a long time. Uh, yeah, I was one of the founding sort of members of the club, I suppose, and then this is now our seventh season in National League competition, so I've been with us from the start. And Joe Dash, how have you got involved in uh, This is my second season. I played a few years ago with Matt uh, back in Lincoln. So, Matt, whereabouts do you play in, in Hull? What kind of facilities do you have in terms of when you play your big games? We play at Andrew Marvel, which is uh, in East Hull. Right. It's quite a new venue to us because we've bounced around venues for the last few years and, and we've been trying to look for that permanent home, which hopefully we found in Andrew Marvel. But it's a great little venue, it's part of a college set up, so we'll probably get about 250 people in there on a game night and it's just a really strong atmosphere. And what kind of physical aspects do you have to bring to it? Because it, like we can see it's not a very easy game, you can't just walk, you know, walk on the pitch. So what kind of physical aspects do you have to bring to the game? Uh, there's a, more than physical, there's a lot of di discipline that comes in the game. Okay. Physical, a lot of intensity, a lot of fitness comes into it as well. Just skill set, practice, practice. Yes, so how often do you practice then? At the minute, I play about four times a week. Well, when I was a bit younger, maybe a bit more every day. <laughs> a bit more keno. Yeah, not, not, not so keen on it. <laughs> Matt, do you think there's this kind of physical um, level that you have to come in at in terms of fitness? I think it helps. I think basketball fitness is so different to any other type of sport as well. So it's only the type of fitness you can develop whilst being around the sport and being on the floor with everybody training. So, I mean, it helps to be tall. You know, but it's not yeah, I've not got that benefit, unfortunately. But it helps, it, it helps, but it's not everything. You know, we've got some, some players with different size and ability, but just being on the floor is where we're going to develop our fitness. And fitness. <laughs> Thank you very much to the whole Wasp for inviting me into the team, and now I'm a fully fledged member. Back to you in the studio, Bob. Enjoy, enjoyable watching that. Uh, Matthew, how fast is it? Fast. It is a fast game. I mean, it co compared to like sports like football, it's it's up and down. So, um, whereas football, you, the ball spread around and people, it's, qu it's slower to get up and down the pitch. Basketball, you're end to end in eight seconds. You know, you you're taking long shots, short shots. It's it, you got to watch the whole thing. What about the whole stamina of it, Matt? Yeah, you've got to be terrifically fit by the looks of it. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm in the gym every single day. Uh, there's something between stretching, actual running on the treadmill, weights. You got to be strong. Of uh, you know, once once you take a day off where you don't have a basketball in your hand, it shows on the court, and everybody likes to be prepared and you know perform to the higher standard. I think Fitness one thing we're seeing there is very clear. You've got it's end to end stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's start to go. If you're not if you're not ready to to put at that pace, you're going to stand out in a bad way. And like I said, no no one wants that. We're competitive mm -hmm. with it. So height isn't the the main ingredient, it's the key ingredient, Matthew. It's, yeah, I mean, as, as important as height is, we've played some with some fantastic players who have only scratched five foot. It's it's a very skillful game, it's a very technical game, and when you, footwork's a huge importance to basketball, so players with good footwork can actually outshine players who are just tall, but likewise, if you have both, then you're, you know, you're a key player. How long can you go on play for? I think in National League level, you can certainly okay. play until the end of your, your 30s and, and early 40s. We've played against some players again who have pushed that limit. Local League players play until they're 60, 70 years old in Local League. Really? So the last thing to go is your shot. So. And Matt, is it all about then, rather like most other sports, when you get sort of to the vintage years, if you like, you start playing in a different way, technique? Uh, absolutely. It was... I, I laughed when you said the question, you, you can play as long as you have the knees for it. Like you've mentioned, mm -hmm. we've had uh, different affiliates on, on the team that played down in the Doncaster League. And like you said, he's in his mid-60s and he's still getting up and down the court because he wants to be there. Yeah, he's got to prove so, something, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, whereabouts do you play? Just remind us. We play at Andrew Marvel College, which is in East Hall. Um, and it's growing fan base there, so it, it's not too far out of the way for people who want to come and travel to the games. What sort of attendances do you get there? 250 plus normally for games. We've had, we've also set records in, in National League. We've had crowds of nearly a thousand to our games as well. So very good. we're trying to increase the profile and raise the attendance. And your season runs from and to? September till April. So um, we'll we, we have a Christmas break now and then we'll, we'll run through to the end of March, beginning of April. And I imagine there must be so much going on behind the scenes as well, Matt, not just on a match day. A absolutely. As, as to be with someone so often as Matt, who's involved from getting the referees to making sure we have the, the right colored kit, that's it's a day-to-day -day process. You, you, 
you contribute something every day to make sure it runs smoothly. You know, you, know, you want to be prepared, you want to give your best, and you treat it in that fashion. You put a lot of time into it, put good in, you get good out. So That's what it's all about, isn't it? Good That's stuff. Right. We'll talk some more in a short while here on On The Bench. Now, it's time for this week's roundup of local results with Team Talk. First in football, Hull City continue their poor run of form, losing 2-0 against Chelsea right in the relegation zone. Now Hull City are. Meanwhile, in League One, the Iron won 2-1 at home against Crewe, with lone Luke Williams scoring the opening goal. Crewe equalising before Scunthorpe scored the winner through Miguel Vieira. In the FA Trophy, well, Grimsby Town are through to the next round, winning away at Nuneaton 2-0 after a 75-minute delay, would you believe, due to Grimsby's bus being held up in traffic. Elsewhere, Lincoln City went out of the competition, losing 2-0 at home to Alfreton Town. Turning to rugby, Grimsby beat Lincoln 8-7 with their tries scored by Joshua Walker and Luke Chaplin. And Scunthorpe lost 22-17 to Bromsgrove. And finally, Market Raisin and Louth lost away to Huntingdon and District 26-21. Well, that's it for this season's Team Talk. And that's all we have time for for this half. Stay with us, though, for part two. Matt Denson will be joining us to discuss Team Talk as well as his reflection of this week's sport. See you shortly. The Belfast Giants have owned the whole Stingrays for four years, 21 wins in a row in all competitions, all of them in regulation. It's tonight the night. Welcome back. Well, with me is Matthew Fawcett and Matt McCart from Hull Wasps Basketball Club, and now also by Matt Denson. Matt How are you doing? You're okay. Sort of record, three mats three at the same time. <laughs> let's talk football then. Team talk first of all. Well, yeah. where else? Hull City. Let's start with them. Scary. Right in the relegation frame. Now. Yeah, the way that it's positioned in the table down there. Some tough games to come. Uh, they need some points. They yeah. desperately need some points. Where's it going wrong for Steve Bruce at the moment? I don't know. They're playing quite well. I mean, uh, hopefully. They've got some games coming to the other side of the new year where they can score big. You know, they can get the three points. At the minute, it's going to be very hard work. The good thing is, though, the teams around them aren't particularly doing well, so they're not, they're not out of it. There's a long way to go. Steve Bruce having a lot to say at the weekend about uh, the refereeing. He's got to be yeah. careful, hasn't he? Yeah, there's a fine line because you just can't unfortunately criticise them, can you? You criticise them and you get in trouble for criticising them. They've got to do a job. I think the, if this is a problem, the, the uh, Refs Association will look at it, but it's difficult. When you're down there, nothing seems to go your way, does it? Those Europa League games seem a long way off now, don't they? Yeah, a long way. Can he turn way. it round? I think he can. I think he can. Who else would you bring in? You know, that's what you could look at, isn't it? If you get rid of Steve, who has done quite well and has got them where they are, there's a long way to go with the season. That's not he needs to keep 11 players on the pitch, doesn't he? That's his problem. That's, you know, that's not his fault, is it? And especially with the, the players that have been sent off lately and, and getting themselves into trouble, they should know more. You can't win a game these days, or very rarely, with 10 men on the pitch. Next game at home against Swansea. Let's turn to the FA Trophy, Grimsby. Yes. Uh, one yeah. through, 2-0 away at Nuneaton. Yeah, great. A good result. Long way to travel. Good to get those, uh, you know, those, those goals there. So. How important is a good run in the trophy for the Mariners? A good run, it's, it helps with it, everything, doesn't it? You get a good run in the cup, it then helps you in your form with the league, there's confidence in the team, the fans are behind you, you suddenly it barrel rolls. So hopefully, keep things going and we'll be all right. And in the league, you mentioned there, Forest Green Rovers, uh, Macclesfield yeah. twice, Lincoln, the big Lincolnshire derby coming up. So it's a fairly tough schedule over I'm Christmas. Looking forward to that, always do the Lincolnshire oh, yeah. derby. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of points there to be had, but at the same time, if you set your foot off the pace over Christmas, there's plenty of points to be lost as well. So hopefully they can pull it together and go for it. Let's talk about Scunthorpe United, uh, big FA Cup game this week against Worcester City. Yeah. Uh, we've just been hearing this week as well, um, Chesterfield, uh, I've got to replay their game against MK Dons. I so saw that, yes. Still don't really know who they're going to be playing in the next round if they get through. Is it because of a, a player? Wasn't Ineligible player. player. That's right, yeah. So a bit of chaos there because I think they've already done the job and we know who's going through and obviously it's got to be replayed. But again, the beauty of the couple of things like that, you just don't know, do you? Yeah, as an American in this country, how big is football as far as you're concerned, or soccer? Soccer, say. soccer. Very quickly. Um, it's fun, yeah, it, it's picking up. It's fun to watch because it's certainly gaining steam in America with the last World Cup. Yeah. Just more and more people are watching it. So It's all about it's, David Beckham, isn't it, in America? It's, yeah. you, I was just going to say, you know the big names. Uh, like I said, I'm a fan of, of Messi. He's super talented with the ball. Like I said, I don't, you okay. don't have to understand soccer too much to see. He's just doing okay, his Matt. thing, he's gifted. For now, thanks very much. All the maps. Don't know which one I'm talking to. <laughs> Let's take a look now at uh, something you'll be interested in. I'm sure Matt in the middle. Hull Stingrays playing against fifth in the table, the Belfast Giants on Saturday, after they lost out against Dundee 2 1 on Sunday. The Belfast Giants have owned the Hull Stingrays for four years. 21 wins in a row in all competitions, all of them in regulation. It's tonight the night. 
And the whole Stingrays finally get the upper hand. We're ready for hockey on a Saturday night. It's Stingrays and Giants. And it's Keith who plays the first puck forward. And Tom oh, back wow. to Sandrock. We know he can blast them. He does. It bounces out to Keith. Oh, and he fanned on it. And then Lloyd put the rebound wide. And Brown has scrambled back and covered up. And broke down for the Giants. Peacock will try and get it restarted. And Turcott with the hit, which draws a penalty. And the crowd are not going to be happy with that at all. Oh, back on the front foot again. Big slap shot. Blocks in front and put it on the backhand by Peacock. A power play opener for the Belfast Giants. And it just fell perfectly for Craig Peacock. Lows on, spins and shoots and scores! Finally a face-off that goes the Stingrays way and they take full advantage. It was Lowe's on shot. Not sure if it caught someone on the way through. The Stingrays won't mind whose name's attached to it. That's a nice little pass to Lowe's on. Got to knacker in support, Lowe's on shoots and true back saves. Get away. And now Knox with a little bit of room. Oh, and he just lost the handle of the puck as he was trying to go around Brookwell. Keeps it himself and then came out front. And the little back. Oh, that's going to be a penalty. That one is going to be called on Compon. He's not happy, but he's accepted his fate. And we're going to have a long period of five on three coming up here for the Stingrays. Cross and it was kicked away. Lowe's on, side of the goal, fired in by Matty Davis! The power play does work for the Rays, and they lead for the first time tonight. So Peacock is out of the box, but it's still five on four. Here comes Galbraith, trying to move in, Havato! Two in a matter of seconds. And the Hall Arena has come to life. Galbraith made it. Havato couldn't miss it. The webcast tonight. Opportunity here. Westgarth scores. Alone in the slot. And the long road back for the Giants has begun. It's 3-2 now. And the former NHL man, Westgarth, has his say. That'll be class as a scoring chance. Oh, and Peacock just has his stick lifted, and then as he turns around, he catches Davis with the high stick. That's a little unfortunate for Peacock. Davis throws his arms out wide, but there's no call. And the Giants are all going to come streaming forward. Short-handed opportunity. And the save is made by Brown, and it needed to be. Giants want a hooking call of their own. The bench isn't happy. Took by the Stingrays. No offside. And the countdown begins as the shot goes just wide. And the whole Stingrays have waited 1,484 days. And at attempt 22, the Stingrays are winners against the Belfast Giants by three goals to two. 21 straight defeats, all in regulation, in all competitions. That streak is no more. The Stingrays are winners on a Saturday night. And they will move above the Coventry Blaze into seventh place in the Elite League table. Huge milestone pass there for the Stingrays. Then four years they've lost to the Belfast Giants. Can't imagine how it feels to have broken through those defeats. That would also put them ahead of five flyers to take seventh place in the Elite League. Only one point now away from the Edinburgh Capitals. Um, Matt, Matt and Matt. Uh, first, Matthew, let's keep it easy. Uh, what about the pace of uh, basketball compared to what we've just been seeing there? It's, ice hockey. We're a little slower than ice hockey. I mean, they, they move with such fluidity up and down the ice, but we're certainly a fast-paced game, and, and I think it's probably that North American influx over here that, that a lot of points on the board is more entertaining, so we play with that pace. Mm. And ice hockey is big here as well as in the States. Yeah, it was fun for me to see a hockey team 
in whole in this country, I didn't think it was popular over here at all. So it was refreshing to see that. I suppose every street but corner in America's got a bat. Got a nice hockey team, have they? It's just about. yeah, it's certainly popular up, up north, up in the the Boston, up and pushing up in in Canada. But the big cities, they have it, and there's you know people want to see it, people in demand for it. It's fun what about media coverage in this country, Matthew? Is the scope for a bit more? Well, presumably the scope for a bit more, is there? With the ones, certainly, we, see that? yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to emulate what the Stingrays have, and even what Hull have seen and Hull City have. Um, we're certainly not that far away from it in terms of live streams of games and. There is, there is a need for it because we do have a big fan base and not everyone can make the games. And we have an international fan base now because not only do we have Matt from America, but we have French players, Spanish players. So we want to we want to increase our coverage. Hopefully we can. And you, your games are getting streamed as well. Online, well, well some of them are. So, I mean, some of the teams do a really good, good service to the rest of the league. We want to, certainly in the new year, be able to offer a streaming service. Yeah. Um, what about your next game? Tell us what's happening there. Cause the, it's been, yeah, changes. well, we're meant to play Leeds this weekend, but due to schedule conflicts, we're going to play them in the new year. So the next game will be after a Christmas break. Now we'll play Liverpool, who are pushing for a pr promotion in a championship. We'll play them on the 10th of January at home. So, How do you see the rest of the season, Matt? We're optimistic. There, there's basketball to be played. So every, you take it one step at a time, one game at a time. And a lot of those games are home as well, so we don't have to do the little, little battles with what's in itself to go on the road, bring your own energy, be that much more focused. We can, you know, even promote the, the attendance in the city for people to come out and help support it. Not only get wins as a club, but get more people interested. Well, let's hope this raises awareness. Matthew and Matt for now, thanks very much indeed. Well, it's time now for Denson's Reflection. This week, the Champions League draw took place with a tie of the round being Manchester City taking on Barcelona. Will it be sweet revenge for Man City? We'll have to wait and see. Some things in sports surprise us, and so did the Sports Personality of the Year Award, which went to my favourite, Lewis Hamilton, when most people thought Rory McIlroy had this award all teed up. This Christmas, we all wish our local Premier Football team, Hull City, a sack of points from Santa. We all want to see them doing well, because at the moment they're in a relegation zone, and we hope they're going to get out in the new year. Thanks, Matt. No problem. Well, don't forget, you can catch both Tom Reid and Tom Hardy this Saturday over at On The Bench Extra, where they'll be discussing all the local football needs. That's at 10 a.m. Just remains for me to say thanks very much to Matthew and Matt from Hull Wasps. Matthew, just remind us, when are you next in action? We play against Liverpool in the new year on January the 10th at Andrew Marvel College in Hull. And you have a website for more information? Yeah, it's just hullwasps.com. Great. Good luck for the rest of the season, guys. Thank thanks you to you. Too. Thanks to Matt as well. Thank you. Well, I'll be here with Rachel next week for a special Christmas edition of On The Bench. We'll be taking a look back at some of the highlights from this series. Until then, have a great week. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.